forget, we are going to start uh, part two of this text portrait. Okay, so you should have your uh, brushes already created. Um, you should have already turned in part one and created all 10 of your brushes. Um, they should be available to you already. Um, I'm ready for the second part of the portrait. So to start off part two, you should have also taken a portrait of yourself, a friend of yours. Um, it should be one of your own pictures and you're going to open it in Photoshop. I have my picture right here and there I am. Uh, so there is my picture. I'm going to go ahead and um, delete the background. Um, that's the first thing is you're going to unlock your portrait. Okay. And you're going to use a quick selection tool or you can use uh, any tool you want really a uh, selection tool to delete the background. Uh, but it is important that you um, get rid of completely get rid of that background. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I let me try. go. Okay, my hair is a little wonky in that, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do that a little bit, and then I'm going to right-click, select inverse, and I'm going to delete what is there, okay? At this point, I'm going to also clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit like this, um, and then just clean up with an eraser tool, clean up some of this right here that I don't need. Really don't need these hairs right here. I'm going to get rid of this entirely. Okay, great. And I'm going to zoom out of my picture. So there is my uh, picture of me with uh, no background. Okay. Uh, the next step that you're going to do uh, on this text portrait is you're going to um, go to select and go to color range and we're going to choose on the top here we're going to choose mid-tones okay um, and from that drop down menu okay so we're going to select mid-tones and you can see what it's doing it's selecting all these mid-tones here um, you can change the range in case it's too much like so and you're going to click okay and what it does is it makes a selection of all those mid-tones okay the mid-tones not the highlights not the darks but the mid-tones you're going to use the, um, we're going to duplicate what's in the selection here. Okay. So we're going to hit control or command J. And what you can see happened is I duplicated just the midtones. Okay. So you can see there, if I unhide the bottom layer, that just the midtones have been duplicated. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to that background layer and we're going to go back to the select tool and hit color range again. And this time on the drop down, we're going to select shadows. And you can see it is a little, we're going, I'm going to move the range a little bit. So there's more of it. And I'm going to hit OK. So at this point now, only the shadows have been selected. OK. And I'm going to do the same thing with the midtones. I am going to hit Command J to duplicate that layer just the shadows i'm gonna hit command j and you can see now if i hide just the shadows are there the midtones and then i have my original so i'm gonna go to this layer here and type call it shadows and on this layer here i'm going to title it midtones okay so now we have our layer zero the shadows and the midtones um Okay, now I'm going to hide this portrait layer here. So I'm going to hide this background layer. Okay, I'm going to click on the eye. Then I'm going to select both the duplicated layers in the layers panel. I'm going to hold down command or control and click on them. So I'm going to select both of these. And I'm going to merge them in into one with the shortcut 
control E. So I'm going to select both of them and then I'm going to hit control E and that merges them into one layer. Okay. So again, that's, let me go back and do that. I'm going to undo the layer. Oop. I'm going to go back a few steps. I'm going to hide the portrait layer. I'm going to hold control and select the midtone and the shadow layer. Okay. Then I'm going to hold control E or command E and it will merge them both together. So once you've created these two layers, uh, we have a little tricky, a couple tricky little moves here because we need to take this midtone or shadow layer here and place it on a layer mask inverted on layer two. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the midtone or layer. We're going to hold control or command uh, A. And that is going to select everything on that layer. The next thing we're going to do is hit control or command C to copy what's on that layer. Next, we will select layer two and apply a layer mask. Okay. This gets tricky. Then we're going to hold option and click inside the layer mask and hit control V and that will paste it inside that layer mask. Okay. That's a little tricky. Okay. So remember you select the midtone layer, control or command A. Then you copy the midtone layer by hitting control or command C. You add a layer mask on layer two. You hold option and click inside the layer mask. And then you hit com control or command V and paste inside the layer mask. At this point, you can just hit control D to um, deselect it. And you're more than welcome to invert it. Control or command I. And you can see that I've inverted that, um, that image. Okay. Now it's the fun part. We're going to click on that um, and we're going to actually use, this is where the uh, rubber, uh, the stamps come into play and we're going to use all of them that we've created. And if you go to the um, select the brush tool whoop, on the, and then right here next to it, if you've done it properly and you open them up, they will all be there, all 10. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. OK, and you're going to use the black ink and all different sizes. You're going to. I can zoom in here. See, and all different sizes, you're going to start stamping. And you use the bracket tools to stamp all different sizes all over. Don't be afraid to overlap them either. It's not a big deal. So once you've done a few, then you can go back with all of them. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to add that gradient overlay. Uh, we're going to go ahead to the FX button and hit the gradient overlay. And you can select which gradient overlay, but it's really important that it is on screen and you can create any gradient overlay that you want. You um, can even use that one that we used, which is a little extreme, but you can create your own gradient overlay if you want. I'm going to go ahead blue. And then I'm going to go ahead with green, go ahead with another green, oh, a lighter blue on. It's super important that it says screen on there. Um, from this point here, you can add um, letters, highlight letters. 
and you can add another layer on top like this. And then you can actually take um, the colors if you add a blank layer and you can take some of the colors and you can add your brush layers on top to do some uh, highlights, for example, from the words. So like, for example, you can do like this artist and you can do a smaller one to really make it stand out. Oop. I don't like that one. I don't like that one either. Like this. And then you can go to talented and you can pick a different color. Say the green. And that is how we do our text portrait. Um, it is a little difficult. I, sometimes you might need to uh, adjust. There we go. But it, you can see that sometimes you might want to go back in. Remember, you can always erase this layer and start over. Okay, so that is how you do the, this one came out. It's semi-successful. It's hard to see the eye. Um, and like I said, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work, but you have to be patient with it for sure. Okay, and that is how we do our text portrait.